Hey, welcome back to Back of Square May. Today, we're cooking on the Dutch oven again, so y'all stay tuned. So in addition to the Dutch oven today, we're going to try out a new toy we got here. This is a very, very old, uh, usually called spider skillet. Uh, you can see the gate mark there on the bottom. That definitely dates it to the 1800s. Uh, my brother, the other part of the Backwoods Gourmet Barbecue Team, found this for me in Georgia. Uh, wasn't cheap, about 50 bucks. But we're gonna, I just reseasoned this guy. Uh, it was in pretty good shape. I just reseasoned it. And we're gonna give it a shot today. Give it a try. All right, we're gonna take this old guy. It's really a treat. Uh, anytime you can go cook with some a piece of history, you know, and uh, this pan's probably still gonna work just as well now as it did um, well over a hundred years ago. You see there with those feet, just like the Dutch oven, it nestles right up on the coals. I'm gonna get that guy uh, preheated, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start our dish. Here's our other two Dutch ovens. We're gonna be using both of those here today too. So we're going to make our entire meal with this old guy from 1800s and these two guys eh, from the 21st century. They still work awesome. Well, that's only been on a couple minutes. We're going to go ahead and put in some, that's some thick cut bacon and uh, let that start rendering. I mentioned the very first thing you should ever cook on a, a newly seasoned pan, whether your pan is like this one, over 100, maybe 150 years old, is some kind of bacon. Uh, that's going to help your pan uh, tremendously. So if you get a new one or buy an old one, always cook bacon on it first. Okay, well, while our bacon's going off over here, I thought I told you about what we're going to do today. We're going to do some braised beef with uh, onions, and then we're also going to do some. Uh, uh, roasted potatoes with fresh uh, red pepper from the garden and Vidalia onions from our garden also. I'm going to roast those. We're going to use the uh, large Dutch oven to do the uh, veg and we're going to use the uh, 10 inch to braise off that meat. We're using the, uh, the, the, uh, the antique pan just using that because it's the first time I got to play with it. But you can certainly start that meat in the 10 inch. Uh, we'll transfer it there later. Okay, now their bacon's starting to brown and starting to render. I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, about a half a small onion. That's gonna season our oil. We'll give that a little stir and then kind of put the meat on. Yesterday, we uh, started our survival bread recipe. This morning we took it out, kneaded it, and cut it into little pieces and put it in this loaf pan. So now this is going to be our survival bed ro bread rolls. Um, we obviously cannot cook those on a Dutch oven, but we're going to cook them in the oven. But the recipe is the same. I'll put the uh, link to the original uh, survival bread recipe in the description box for you guys. Okay, we took the uh, browned onions and bacon back out of there and we brought over our meat. And uh, this is just uh, any kind of beef you want, really. This, I think, is some uh, chuck eye or something like that. Cut it into smaller strips. And we want to sear these, so we're not going to put a whole lot of them in there at once. We want to get them really brown. So this is going to take a few steps. That's why we started out in this little skillet. Done searing off, so we're going to go ahead and transfer that over. We've already been preheating this uh, the 10 inch Dutch oven over here on the side, so we can finish that up over there. Like I said, we, you could have just done this in the, the 10 inch to begin with, but I wanted to use the uh, pan. Let's take the uh, first batch we did off of, put that in there. So this Dutch oven's already been uh, preheating, but now we have all this beautiful 
uh, goodies in this pan, we want to deglaze that and put it over here. I have some uh, beef stock. So we'll put a little bit, just a little bit in there. We want to get that good bubble and stir it around. That'll bring up your. Uh, that'll bring up the, the the little good goody bits that have all got down there at the bottom of the pan there. We're gonna go ahead and pour that in the other bit over. Oh, we're gonna hear it. Might uh, put a little more in there, but get the idea. Yeah, we got our broth in. Don't forget to put your bacon and your uh, your brown onions right back in there. All that flavor is gonna come with them. We got some more uh, charcoal starting right here behind me. So we want to get these uh, these capped off and get them up to heat. So the next thing we'll do, put the tops on of this one and get some charcoal on it. Well, this is actually frozen, but grown by us in our own garden for uh, organic celery. That's about a, yeah, a quarter cup of celery. I'm just gonna stir that on in there. Uh, still slightly frozen, but that will add a lot of flavor. And uh, let's give it a little while, then we'll put in some, start putting in some fresh herbs. We did uh, marinate this with uh, with our Backwoods Gourmet steak and brisket, brisket rub before we started. All right, so we have our uh, hot coals here. And this number 10, so we're gonna go with a standard 13 on it. These are all uh, just getting lit. We're gonna keep them around the edges. So this is dump them out, then we'll count them. I don't know how I dumped exactly 13 on there, but I did. So we'll spread the spread them out around the edges evenly. And you three in the leave three in the middle. So that's gonna be uh, that meat's home for a little while. So we'll check on it a little bit. Okay, just like with the other oven, we're gonna go ahead and season the bottom of the Dutch oven with a little bit of chopped uh, thick sliced bacon. Get that get that uh, ready to cook. All right, that's about halfway rendered down. Here we have our uh, these potatoes. I've, I've tossed those in olive oil, uh, dried rosemary, salt, and pepper. And we're just going to go ahead. There's some moisture that's come out of them from the salt. We don't want that in our our pan. So we're going to kind of try to scoot them out of there without getting all that moisture. The salt has brought all this moisture out of the uh, the veg. And since we're roasting these, we want them to stay kind of dry. But this would be great to put back into our uh, stock here. We'll do that next time we open it up. Hey, I wanted to demonstrate my new uh, Father's Day gift. Uh, my wife and kids got me this uh, great lid lifter from Camp Mead. It could be uh, used for multiple purposes, but it really holds that lid nice. Um, it holds uh, all sides dust over lids. Just pop that spring down on, it's perfect perfect lift every time. You can also use it for a tripod, a warming area. You can put coals down here and keep your Dutch oven on top. There's a lot of different things for it, so check it out. It's a camp made uh, Dutch oven Dutch oven tool. So we're going to go ahead and get some heat on top of those guys. This is number 12, so we definitely want to go with about 15 or a little more maybe. So let's see how we did that time. Remember our coals are starting to burn down on the bottom, so I'm gonna need a few more on the top. So whatever extras we got on the top, we'll just throw a few down around the bottom. We do it on this campfire. This, this is pretty forgiving. Everybody's like, oh, you gotta have exactly this many. Well, you know, I found that it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of difference. Um, I mean, as long as you're not completely burying it. I like about that right there. I'm not even gonna count those. I can already tell you that that's about right. The more you do this, the better you get at it. Okay, what I have here is just some uh, melted butter. 
we're going to go ahead and just paint the tops of these. I don't make them uh, a little more tender. So we'll just hit each one of these and we got the oven. In this case we're going to we're going to cook these in the oven since they're in this loaf pan. Obviously we can't uh, fit these in the Dutch oven. Alright folks, we got both of them going now since neither one of them really need to look at in a, in a while now. We're going to go ahead and uh, stack them. This is the great thing about these uh, ovens. Your coals on the uh, bottom of that one. Uh, you could stack these. If you had an eight, you could go another, another, another tier with it. So we're going to go ahead and use the same coals, and then we'll use these extras over here just to, to refeed the fire. So we're going to finish this for a, at least the next little while. Uh, stack. Okay, here's our. Uh, our roasted potatoes they're looking pretty good we just put in some tomatoes so wait till the end to put these guys in or they'll way overcook that'll be awesome take a quick look at our, uh, our meat we did put a little bit more uh, hot water in there raising down really nice okay you can stack these or not it's been about an hour on the meat. We'll go ahead and take a peek at it. And it's uh, cooked down very nicely right at this point. It's already getting very tender. Just checked it. We're going to go ahead and put one uh, medium chopped onion in there. Give that a little stir. Got my uh, big tool here. We don't want these onions to cook down, you know, to nothing. We want them to be still. You know, just cook, clarified, and then uh, we'll put the lid back on there. Give that about ten. We'll minutes. set that over there and let it uh, finish up on that stand. It's that can't made lid lifter and stand. Works guys, pretty well. Guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching my channel. Uh, we just fixing to hit 1300 subscribers on our channel and we appreciate every one of you uh, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video today was to uh, you know use this uh, antique pan here um, I always tell friends and family that I think I was born 100 years too late because I really enjoy uh, doing things the old way and this old pan here kind of brings me back up makes me think about how people must have lived, you know, 100, 200 years ago when, you know, there wasn't any technology. This was technology and fire was technology. So, this is a great meal. Uh, we did this here on the, on the patio today, you know, but you can do this camping in the woods, anywhere you go, get your, uh, you know, hunting, fish camp, whatever. Um, all you need is some good old cast iron, some, you know, a Dutch oven, or, you know, even this guy. Uh, fry up some fish on that over the campfire. Absolutely delicious, I'm sure. So, y'all keep watching, and uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep trying to uh, teach you how to do it the old way.